Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. I'm recording this 15 minutes after Bucks Heat Game 5 just wrapped up because typically I take some time to write down some notes for each of the games, some stats, some fun things that I want to bring up to cover each one just so I don't forget anything. But with what just happened, something of this magnitude, something that is not just melting down NBA Twitter, but I'm sure that every NBA media space and NBA fan will be talking about this moment for years to come, I feel like you deserve my initial reactions. And if you don't know what's going on, number one, where have you been? But number two, the Milwaukee Bucks just lost game five of their first round series to the Miami Heat. And if I told you that before the series, you probably would have thought, oh, okay, you know, it's no big deal. The Bucks are probably up 3-2 going into game six in Miami. It's getting a bit close but they're going to close this thing out. You know, the Heat, Jimmy Butler, they typically level up in the playoffs, so it's not that surprising. Except for the fact that this wasn't any win. With this Game 5 win, the Heat have defeated the Milwaukee Bucks, the championship favorite number one overall seeded Milwaukee Bucks in the first round as a play-in team. They are the first playing team to ever win a playoff series, and it only took them five games. Now, I know Giannis missed a good portion of this series, but even still, these past two games, Giannis played, and it didn't matter. Tonight, the Bucks were at home. They had Giannis, they had Brooke, they had Drew, they had Chris, they had everybody ready to go, and they lost. And it was an absurd game, kind of a replay of what we saw last game, but even more dramatic because of what was on the line. It was completely absurd. And now, of course, everything is melting down. This is, I believe, the only sixth time that an eight seed has ever beaten a one seed. And the Heat looked really not good at all this season. Like, of course, you know, Jimmy always gets better in the playoffs. We typically see that. Bam Adebayo is great. Tyler Hero is great. But Tyler Hero also broke his hand in game one of this series. Victor Oladipo hurt his patella earlier on in this series. So a team that already lacks depth had even less of it. And it didn't matter. They pulled off one of the most historic upsets you will ever see. And I know some people are going to say in the comments below that I'm over-exaggerating or, oh, it's not that big of a deal because Giannis was gone. I don't care. You had two games with Giannis in the lineup to go ahead and, you know, even this thing up, or at least, you know, even down 3-1, they were hardly underdogs, according to most betting sites. A lot of people, me included, I thought the Bucks were going to come back because it's what we've seen from them in the past. I know they have that championship pedigree. Giannis, in my opinion, is the best player in the world. I'm sure that's a take that a lot of people are going to tear apart on my Twitter timeline, and I'm sure a lot of y'all in the comments below are also going to do that. I myself am even questioning a lot of things at the moment. But the Heat did it. They are moving on to the second round to face the New York Knicks, an outcome that a few of you actually commented on my playoff predictions video. Once again, in that video, I predicted the Bucks to win the NBA Finals. I thought they were going to do it. I made a video that people are now talking about on my Twitter timeline. I made a video like a month and a half ago, maybe, calling the Bucks the clear title favorites, and they lost. I thought this was a sweep in favor of the Bucks, that I would hardly be making any videos about it in this recap series. Yet the Miami Heat are moving on to the second round. And again, they did it mostly behind the play of Jimmy Butler, who had 42 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals on 17 of 33 shooting. Kevin Love at 15 and 12. He knocked down 5 threes. All the shots is 11. Were threes, but he fouled out of this game. Bam Adebayo had 20 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, a triple-double from Bam, who's gotten a lot of slander over the course of this series. I know he's playing through an injury, so shout out to him for this performance. He also ended up fouling out late in this game. game Vincent had 22, including a massive three that helped the Heat ultimately take this win. Kyle Lowry had 10 before he fouled out as well. A lot of Heat players fouled out in this game, and we'll talk about the Bucks free throws in a little bit, but they pulled it off. Like at the end of the game, it was, I think, Jimmy Butler, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, Cody Zeller, and Caleb Martin out there. Like those were the five guys in at this end of the game to take down the number one overall seed. It's just completely absurd. And of course, a lot of the credit is going to go to Jimmy Butler as it should. This is... For a guy who's had so many iconic playoff moments at this point in his career, this is like the crowning jewel of it because a couple of years ago, the Heat faced the Milwaukee Bucks in the bubble and they took them down. And a lot of people said, oh, it was just because of the bubble, the Heat in any normal series would not have beaten that Bucks team, which was incredibly dominant that year. And people felt justified in saying that because the next year, the Bucks swept the Heat. They destroyed them. But now this year, the Heat came into the series as the ultimate underdogs. And not only did they beat the Bucks, they beat them in five games. They 
out of nowhere became the best three-point shooting team in the league. Once again, kind of similar to what they did, just destroying the Bucks from outside back in 2020 in the bubble. They did it. They have destroyed all those bubble narratives. All that is gone. This Heat team has proven that not only did they do it then, but they can still do it now. And it's mainly because of Jimmy Butler, who is one of the best playoff performers of the modern era. Like this is an incredible moment. Everyone is losing it over what Jimmy Butler did to send this game to overtime. He caught an alley-oop falling backwards towards the ground. He landed on his back and put it up and in. He hit big shot after big shot. Like I said, he had, what was it? Uh, 42 points. And on this series as a whole, he averaged like 37 or something like that. It was one of the best first round series performances that I have ever seen. Maybe the single best. I can't think of any right now off the top of my head in terms of both statistics and impact being an eight seed to take down a one seed. It's completely absurd. I I really don't know what to say other than say what I said last video talking about the Heat. He's him. It's just kind of the only way I can describe what Jimmy Butler did in this game. And he deservedly is going to get a lot of the credit. But this whole Heat team, Eric Spolstra, getting them in position to succeed, stepping up when Hero left for the series, stepping up when Victor Oladipo got hurt. Duncan Robinson, who has now been widely considered as one of the worst contracts in the league, went lights out in this series, knocking down threes from you know, typical Duncan Robinson range, like we saw years ago before he got that contract, he turned into an amazing shooter again. Gabe Vincent played some solid minutes. Kyle Lowry looked really solid, had some big defensive moments. Even Bam Adebayo, who didn't have a great series, stepped up in the big moments when they needed him. He played incredible defense on Giannis and this whole team in the second half. In the first half, the Bucks looked unstoppable. They even had a double-digit lead in the third quarter. I know a lot of people probably turned the game off at that point, but then the Heat once again made a huge comeback in the fourth quarter like they did last game, going on an 11 to one run at the start of the period and never looking back, forcing overtime. I can't believe they did this. Like it is blowing my mind. I've been sitting here now talking about it to you for like uh, over here on the recording. It's a seven minutes, but I'm sure I've cut some of that out. But I've been sitting here talking about it to you. I was watching it with my brother. I've been tweeting about it. It has not set in. And I really don't know when it will. Probably when the Knicks and Heat are playing in the second round. And the fact that one of the Knicks or Heat are going to go to the second round when it felt like a foregone conclusion that it was going to be the Bucks is absurd. This has been one of the best first rounds in recent history, really almost ever in terms of the NBA playoffs. I tried to tell people it was going to be an amazing first round. The drama, the upsets everything is coming together. I know some of the injuries have taken away some of the hype to the series. I completely acknowledge that, but even still, there's amazing basketball being played, and it's only going to get better and better as we go on. I can't believe that the Heat did this. Uh, shout to Jimmy Butler, the rest of the squad, all you Heat fans out there watching. I picked y'all to get swept. I will fully admit that. Feel free to flame me down below in the comments. I completely deserve it. Yeah, shout to the Heat. I, I can't believe this happened. And of course, we've got to talk about the Bucks, who are rightfully so getting a lot of slander. So let's go through a couple of things. I got their box score pulled up right here on my screen. Giannis uh, finished the game with 38 points, 20 rebounds, three assists. He did have seven turnovers. And the thing that most people are pointing to are the free throws. Giannis in this game shot 10 of 23 from the free throw line in a game that went to overtime and they ended up losing by two. If Giannis goes 13 of 23 from the line, they win this game. In fact, if he goes 11 of 23 from the line, which in itself is bad, they win this game in regulation. I mean, maybe, you know, the Heat go for a three and they end up tying it anyways and win in overtime. But just for the sake of argument, if Giannis hits one, two, or three more free throws, in fact, if he hits five more and goes 15 of 23, which is also still pretty bad, they win this game very comfortably. Like, it's really not even a threat at the end of the game. And we're moving on to game six. And maybe the Heat still win this series. But we aren't going to find out because Giannis didn't hit the free throws. And this has always been a problem with his game. I'm sure it's going to spur him to work harder. And ultimately, I don't think Giannis was the reason they lost this game, even though he did miss a bunch of free throws. Like I said, he still finished with 38 points, 20 boards. He shot 14 of 27 from the field. It's not his fault, but he definitely deserves some of the blame for not being able to hit those free throws. He was really scared of going to the line at the end of regulation before the Heat ended up tying the game on that crazy Jimmy Butler shot. Uh, there was a jump ball because Kyle Lowry got called for a foul. They got challenged and overturned. So there was a jump ball at center court. The Bucks won it and the ball got to Giannis and he wanted nothing to do with the free throw. So he threw the ball over to Chris Middleton immediately. It's like the fastest I've ever seen a player get rid of the ball. And it almost went out of bounds, turning the ball over and giving the Heat not only a chance to tie the game, but win the game at the end. 
However, thankfully for the Bucks, Chris Middleton caught it, saved it to Drew Holiday, who hit one of two free throws, which eventually did set up the Jimmy Butler shot and Drew himself ended up shooting six of eight from the free throw line. So if he makes that one too, the Bucks once again probably win. Uh, Brooke Lopez went one for three. As a whole, this team shot 28 of 45 from the line. That's the deficit. Like, that's the game right there. You hit all your free throws, you blow them out. You hit even 10 more free throws, you blow them out. But if you miss free throws, there's nothing you can really do in this situation. And also, you know, the free throw shooting is one main thing. Their offense also just went completely cold. Like the Heat's defense was incredible, but the Bucks' offense also just completely stalled. They had no game plan whatsoever. And I think a lot of that goes to Mike Budenholzer, who is one of the biggest targets of slander right now on Twitter from what I've seen. And it's deserved because at the end of regulation, when Jimmy Butler tied that game up, if you notice from the clip that I hopefully showed maybe even multiple times during this video, there was like 0 0.8, 0 0.6 seconds left. It was a tied game. The Bucks had a timeout. They just did not call it. They inbounded the ball to Giannis, who I don't even think threw up a heave if I remember correctly. They had the chance, I mean, a couple years ago, or it was more than a couple years ago at this point, but Chris Middleton against the Celtics, probably like five, six years ago, hit a three with, I believe it was 0.4 seconds left to send the game to overtime. They've seen it happen before. And if you throw a lob up to Giannis or Brooke Lopez down low, there's a potential chance that they get fouled and you just have to hit one of two and you win the game. But he didn't call timeout. He didn't advance the ball and was perfectly fine with just letting the game go to overtime. And again, in overtime at the end of this one, when the Bucks are down two points with, I believe it was like nine seconds or so left, uh, might've even been less than that, but I think it was around nine. They, he just let them inbound the ball. Like he let them just bring the ball up the court. They didn't even get a shot off. Grayson Allen at the end had a chance to shoot. He just straight up didn't, which a lot of people are also talking about. Multiple shot attempts got shut off by the Heat's defense, which was stellar in these final moments, but they didn't get a shot off. You're telling me you don't call a timeout. In fact, they had two timeouts. So you could have called one, called up a play. And if it got stalled, you can call a second one. Or if you call a timeout, you go to inbound the ball, you might get a five second violation. You still have a timeout to use. He had two timeouts. I don't know if he's saving them for later or something like that. There's no more games to play, bud. You can't save those. I just don't know what he was doing. There was a tweet that I thought was hilarious. Someone was like, uh, Mike Budenholz was chilling on the sideline like, dang, this game's really good rather than coaching it. It's just, it's indefensible. Like these mistakes cost them a potential championship run. And I know saying that after they just lost four to one is crazy because there's a good chance the Heat still get that stop. But there is probably a universe out there where Mike Boonholzer calls a timeout. They tie this game, send it to double overtime. The Heat are missing several key players due to foul outs. They can win this game. They can move on in the series if they make it out of this series. It's a lot of what ifs, but you still have to give your team the chance to at least try that. He didn't. He let them go. A team that was failing consistently to set up any offense of their own. Maybe he just didn't trust the half court offense, but you have to trust your coaching abilities to set up a play to get someone open. You have Giannis, you have Brooke who can set big body screens for Chris, who is cooking in this game. He had 33 points, I believe. Yeah, 33 points. You do nothing. You just let this game, he just let it go away. And I really, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's indefensible. I would not be surprised if they fired him. A lot of people are calling for his job. In fact, I think he should be fired. I never thought Mike Boonholzer was a great coach. He's gotten a bit more in my favor. I think the other day I called him a good coach, which was kind of even stretching it a little bit. A couple of y'all actually commented about that, but this is indefensible. Like this is a fireable offense in and of itself. You know, also losing the first round is a fireable offense, but doing this in the moment where you could have saved your season potentially, at least for the time being, it's horrific. It's one of the biggest coaching blunders I've ever seen. And if Mike Budenholzer gets fired, I don't blame them whatsoever. There's some great coaches out there in the market at the moment. Go ahead, make the switch. I also would not be surprised if the Bucks kept him. I mean, I guess they have excuses with the Giannis injury for the first few games. They won a championship with him, I guess. But like, those are the only reasons why you keep him. You should fire him. You have to. With this historic collapse, losing in five games as the championship favorite, the number one overall seed with an MVP candidate, a defensive player of the year candidate, another all-star, and Chris Middleton, who most years when he's healthy is also an all-star, a bunch of depth. This is a team that had no business losing the first round. It had no business being in a tight series in the first round, even with Giannis injured. The Heat had other plans. Jimmy Butler and the guys destroyed them made them pay and the Bucks were not ready for the moment. They fell apart and now they're a part of some really bad history, I guess is all I can say. Um, yeah, it's, I still can't believe it. I'll quickly touch on the other two games from tonight because I'm sure some of y'all are interested, although I imagine most of you are just here to hear my reaction to the Bucks heat thing. But 
Shout to the Knicks, defeating the Cavaliers in five games. Big series from them. Jalen Brunson was amazing. Uh, RJ Barrett stepped up in a big way as well. Josh Hart was incredible. Just amazing coaching from Tom Thibodeau. Also, Mitchell Robinson destroyed the Cavaliers on the glass. He had 11 offensive rebounds in this game. He finished the series with 29 in five games, which is ridiculous in and of itself. But against the Twin Towers, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen down low for Cleveland. Mitchell Robinson at 29 offensive rebounds, and they had 30 as two near seven feet guys going up against the one. They failed to box him out left and right. The Knicks as a whole just out hustled this Cavs team continuously. Uh, Donovan Mitchell kind of shrunk in the moment, which is surprising coming from Spida. In these playoff moments, you typically see him rise to the occasion. Wasn't the case. Uh, the Cavs have a lot of flaws on this roster. I might make a full video talking about what they need in the offseason. If you want to see that, please let me know down below in the comments. But yeah, shout out to the Knicks. I picked the Cavs in seven in my playoff predictions video, but at the same time, I'm not surprised the Knicks won. I said in that video multiple times that if they took advantage of the offensive rebounding like they did, they stepped it up defensively and they got great production from Jalen Brunson. If he could outduel Donovan Mitchell, they had a great shot to win this series. They did basically all of those things. I am kind of stunned at how quickly the series is over. I thought if the Knicks won, it would be in six or seven games, but ultimately the Knicks get it done in five. Shout to them. I'm going to try to go to one of the Knicks games against the Heat because I do live up in New York City right now, if you did not know. So I'm going to try to go to one of those games. I checked ticket prices. They're like $500. So it might be a bit expensive, but you know, I'll try and go ahead and get there. And if I do, maybe I'll make a vlog out of it or something. But yeah, shout out to the Knicks going ahead and getting this win. I can't believe one of the Knicks or the Heat are going to make it to the conference finals. The NBA playoffs are ridiculous. And finally, I'll touch on the Golden State win over Sacramento in Game 5, winning three straight now and going up 3-2 to two over the Kings. Uh, Draymond Green had a great game in this one. Coming off the bench, he's looked phenomenal. Steph Curry's doing typical Steph Curry things. The Kings just can't seem to get their usual offense going, and the Warriors are cooking on the level that we saw from them last season. They're once again looking like the defending champions that I thought they'd look like all year. They seem to have kind of figured things out. Andrew Wiggins has come back in full force. Their defense has been better and better offensively they're cooking and now they're winning road games too the NBA is very wide open at the moment if you couldn't tell from the Bucks losing in round one so if the Warriors are able to get this momentum and continue it into the second round if they can take game six or seven they'll have a chance to win in Chase Center for game six which I think at this point, the way the series has gone, I expect them to in this moment. I would still love to see a game seven between these two teams because it's been incredible hoops all the way through, even though I'm sure most people were watching Bucks Heat throughout the most part of this Warriors Kings game because for some reason the NBA put four games that were all like back to back to back to back with two going on at whatever moment that you try to watch basketball. It was terrible scheduling from the NBA. But yeah, uh, this was another great game between these two teams. I hope it goes to seven, if I'm being honest. But I do think the Warriors are kind of well set up to win this one in six. They've just looked like the better team ever since game two ended. They've got things clicking right now. And the Warriors are once again, absolutely terrifying. And as always, a threat to win the West. Those are my thoughts on the games from tonight. And in particular, the Heat's crazy upset win in the series over Milwaukee. Let me know what your biggest takeaways were. What should the Bucks do going forward? Also, if you want to see a video of me talking about what they should do going forward for next season, also comment down below. Typically in years past, I've done a whole series of what's next videos for teams that get eliminated from the playoffs that I think are interesting. I already have one in the works for the Clippers that I think you'll probably see Friday. So be on the lookout for that one at some point coming soon, because I think they are in particular a really interesting spot at the moment going into the off season. But yeah, I appreciate y'all watching as always. Please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. And also, Hit the notification bell while you're there. These videos come out nonstop throughout the playoffs. It's been incredibly fun to recap these games for y'all. And amazing moments like this are exactly why I do it because I otherwise would have just been sitting here rambling to myself in my room if I didn't have y'all to talk to. Although I guess I'm kind of doing that here in front of the camera. Regardless, I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one say it back.